I've been a big fan of the Pokemon franchise ever since I first got a copy of Pokemon Emerald for my birthday back in elementary school. Now, I haven't been following the Pokemon Sword and Shield pre-release information that closely, but there is one thing I've noticed. There are a lot of controversies surrounding these games. It seems like every week there's a new thing that people are pissed about. Maybe it's the animations, maybe it's something else, maybe they think the game's gonna be all handholdy. But one issue in particular caught my attention. It's been officially confirmed that for the first time in franchise history, not every Pokémon will be playable in a main series game. And no, Let's Go does not count as main series, I consider it a spin-off. A good spin-off, but a spin-off. Now, as much as this news did disappoint me, I realized that this was really inevitable. Deep down, I always knew that there would eventually come a point where they couldn't implement every single Pokémon into an upcoming game. I mean, let's look back at the first Pokemon games, Red, Blue, and Yellow. Generation 1 had 151 Pokemon with 2D sprites that didn't even have color. Fast forward to Generation 7, and now not only are there 807 Pokemon, every single one of them has 3D models with full color and animation. Putting that all into the games takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and most importantly, a lot of money. And just think about what it means for future games. As Nintendo's hardware and software improves, and there's more Pokémon added, it's going to take even more time, even more effort, and even more money to implement things in the future. Quite simply, this couldn't continue like it had been forever. It just wasn't going to work. Now, let's also be real here. For a casual playthrough, at least the first playthrough, it's not really going to affect you. However, there is one group who I do think will really be negatively affected by this change. And that's the people who like to battle at a competitive level. Now, we don't yet know which Pokémon are and aren't going to be included, but there's a decent chance that some competitive battlers aren't going to be able to bring their teams all the way up. Now, I know people are not happy about this, and I can't exactly blame them. However, I also understand why this change needed to occur. However, I have theorycrafted a solution. And this solution should still actually be viable for quite a long time. But before I go into the specifics of that, I'd like to look at how they actually did manage to fix the issue of Pokémon transfers. So let's rewind back all the way to Generation 3, so that's Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and Fire Red and Leaf Green. These are the earliest games from which you can actually get Pokémon into the modern games. The cartridge versions of Generation 1 and 2 games can't actually be transferred up due to hardware limitations. But from Generation 3 onward, every single game has had a way to get Pokémon from the previous generation. However, the process was a little bit tedious if you had to transfer through multiple generations. If you want to get a Pokémon from a Gen 3 game to any 3DS game, you need to buy and beat a Generation 4 and a Generation 5 game, and you also need to have access to a DS or a DS Lite in addition to the 3DS. I mean, this takes quite a bit of time and money on the part of the player. And of course, this was an issue they realized they had to address, because with every new game release, it would take even longer to get a Pokémon from Gen 3 all the way up. So they implemented a service called Pokémon Bank. For those unfamiliar, Pokémon Bank is a service that costs $5 per year, basically enough to maintain the servers, and it acts as cloud storage for your Pokémon. Now that's pretty useful on its own, but the main draw is the fact that it's going to be the new way to transfer Pokémon from any 3DS game to any other 3DS game or any game in the foreseeable future. They basically made a centralized hub for Pokémon transfers. It's a way that once you get a Pokémon to any 3DS game, you'll never have any issues getting it to future games. So I'm going to propose a similar solution, and it's actually going to connect to the Pokémon Bank. What I'd like to see is essentially an official Pokémon Battle Simulator, using Pokémon stored in Pokémon Bank. The way it works is you take any Pokémon from a compatible game and store it in the Pokémon Bank. From there, you launch this Pokémon Battle Simulator, and you can draw Pokémon from your Pokémon Bank to battle other players who've done the same. Realistically, they can probably use the same matchmaking system they used from the previous Pokémon games in this new Battle Simulator. The reason I think this would work so well is that in the future generations, we know they're going to have to cut Pokémon, and they can continue to do that without fear of any negative issues. The only additional workload they'd have is to implement the new generation of Pokémon into the existing Pokémon Battle Simulator. This is obviously going to be a lot easier on Game Freak than having to re-implement every single Pokémon every single time they make a new generation of games. And another big bonus to my solution is the fact that it'll allow cross-generation battling. As long as both players have Pokémon Bank and have stored Pokémon in there, they can battle each other even if the main series game they play are from different generations. 
Because this is a separate program, not anything directly connected to any of the games, it doesn't have to deal with the limitation of, say for example, your friend's Omega Ruby can't deal with Generation 7 Pokémon. Instead, that's all handled within the battle simulator. You and your friend can battle each other within the battle simulator and then transfer your Pokémon back to their respective games with no issues whatsoever. Now let's talk a little bit about visuals. I'm really not a huge stickler for graphics, but I understand that there are those who are, and also, in the future, standards are going to be much higher than they are today. Therefore, I think it would be actually a big mistake if Game Freak were to design this battle simulator with graphical fidelity in mind. So I think instead of making the graphics better on a technical level, they should look at making it more stylized. Stylized art tends to hold up well over time, so I don't think there should be any issues down the line. Hell, I don't think it would even be that bad if they went back to 2D sprites. Now, I'm no artist, I don't really know what would work and what wouldn't, but that's definitely something to consider. And the last thing I'd like to mention is the fact that Nintendo is probably going to have to charge for this service. After all, even though it does solve all the issues I mentioned and will make people happy, which is good for the company, it costs them development time and developer money to make. Now, I think one of the worst things they could do is charge full price for something like this. This is not a full game, and it should not be priced as such. Plus, the fact that you need an active Pokémon Bank subscription would be a big negative in that regard. And yes, I realize that Pokémon Bank is only $5 a year, that is dirt cheap, and it's only to pay for server costs, but it's still more than nothing. So I think a price point of probably around $15 to $20 would be fair, especially considering that future Pokémon players who haven't picked up the games yet will be purchasing this so they can play with their friends. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. This was just an idea that had been building up in my head for the past few days now. The more I think about it, the more I go over the specifics, the more I think, hey, this could actually work. Now, I don't actually expect anyone from Game Freak or Nintendo to see this and do anything about it, but I just thought it was a cool idea and thought it would be cool to get this out to the world. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments, and for sure, please tell me if something I said doesn't make any sense or if I've made a logical inconsistency. But you know what, I'm not going to ramble on because I have nothing else to say. So, as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Can you make my